every heart that is in need of being touched, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity and we thank you for your covering. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God is good. God is yes, good. He is. And I tell you, I sat at home during the week, and I'm like, God, what do you want me to talk about? My book opened up to Acts 4. And I said, Lord, okay, let me, let me talk about that. But then God gave me a revelation. He helped me to understand it's time for his people to start realizing the tricks of the devil. One of the tricks is in this chapter. Now, when you when you read this chapter, um, you see that Paul, Paul and um, and John was doing ministry, but prior to this, it was they healed somebody at the gate. Beautiful. I don't know if you remember that that scripture. And he told them that I don't have any money, yeah. I don't have anything to get you, but what I got, what I'm going to give you, yeah, yeah. it will work. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. And he healed, he was healed. In the name of Jesus, That's right. of Nazareth, he said, you are healed in Jesus of Nazareth name. Now, when I, when I read this before, I wondered, why is the Sanhedrins and the Sadducees and the priests and everybody getting upset. When you go to um, chapter 4, you'll see why. And it says here, and I'm reading from the NIV version, and it says here, the priests and the captain of the temple guards and the Sadducees came to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, pro proclaiming, okay, proclaiming in Jesus, Jesus the resurrected of his death. Now, this is something, and I found this so interesting because the same people who was getting upset is the same people who orchestrated his death crucifixion. And so here you have them getting upset because Peter and John uses Jesus' name. Now let me just tell you something. If you ever want something to happen for you and you want it to be done right, say in Jesus' name. That's right. In Jesus', in Jesus name. You got to give him the authority to work on your behalf. That's right. If you going to say um, help me and I'll be okay and then you don't give no precedence to the person who you is believing in. You're not giving him the strength 
and the authority to help you. Now here, Peter and John gave the authority to Jesus when he said he demanded to be healed in Jesus' name. Now you would think that you being healed would be a happy occasion. You know, see, and it shows you that sometimes when God comes through for you and help you out with something, yeah, yeah. it shows you that there is sometimes people who is not happy with that. That's right. That's who right. wants to see you fall. Yeah, who wants to see you dis degraded or even rejected. They don't yeah. want to see prosperity or, or happiness yeah. or peace. Here it is. Um, they said in Jesus' name. Now the Pharisees, the priests, and everybody of church, okay, this was church people, all right, is upset. And they said to him, and he said, um, they seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed so the number of men who believe grew to about 5,000 men. Can you imagine that? Now, not only did they heal the man, uh -huh. the man came in the church after he was healed, running and jumping. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, they have seen this man at the gate beautiful for, for almost 30, 35 years. And they are amazed, you know? And then when they hear that how he got healed, yeah. they even more amazed. That's right. So it draw people to believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. It draw people to understand where the power was. That's right. And everything they was going through, all the stuff they was dealing with, it made them understand where the power for your situation happening in a positive way will come from. Uh, and so they was, um, so they was th a thousand men. Now this may, the, now tell me is this weird. The priest and everybody got upset with that. Mm -hmm. 5,000 people got, got saved. Mm -hmm. The priest, the church people got upset with that. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you, the next day the rulers and the elders and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem and must and the high priest were there, and so was Car Carpenter. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. John, um, Alexander, and others of the high priest family. Now, this is a family of folks who all believe that resurrection was not possible and is not true. Then, um, then they had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power, <laughs> by what power, what name did you do this? Now, the, 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 it, it really strikes me funny because they say, by what power? When they, shouldn't they just say, well, how did you do it? But they actually use the power, the word power, to describe Jesus. Right? And then he's saying, by what power did you do this? Okay? And you know, Peter is a very uh, uh, precacious person. He will tell you off in a minute. He will speak his mind in a minute. But here he said to them, he said to them, um, then had Peter and John, okay, brought to, then, then here we go. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account for today for an action of kindness, show to the man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crook, um, crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Now, 
this blew their mind because not only Peter could have just said, well, it was by the name, we healed them by the name of Jesus Christ, you know. But Peter wanted to remind them of what they did wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he said, whom you crucified. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, that gives them more power mm -hmm. to the people who's listening because he crucified, you killed him, but he still come back and he healed people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. So then here, these yes. people got even more excited. That's right. I know I would have been. Y'all yes. crucified him, he resurrected, and he's still healing people, yes. and y'all mad about it. Yes. You know? And I'm saying to myself, how in the world, church people, you got to be careful. Because it's easy for us to slip into self. It's easy for us to slip into self-gratification if it's something that we desire out of the situation. And I mean, a lot of times we look at things and we don't see the spiritual part of it. I'm going to give you an example. I don't know how many of y'all watch the, um, the uh, Olympics. I don't know why I was drawn to it. I was brought to the Olympics. I started watching it, and I'm looking at all of this creativity, all this dynamic um, artistry, everything I'm looking at. Right. I'm even looking at a, a, a horse mm. being um, on top of, I think it was a submarine, but the horse was on top and the man was on the horse, and they was riding this good. In the um in in the the river I forgot what that was, the river they call and it represents something I thought it was wonderful I said oh my God what creativity isn't that wonderful mm -hmm. I found out they quoted that from Revelation six the horse represented the white horse that represents the devil. Then there's a pale horse. They use that in the in the opening ceremony of the Olympics. The pale horse represented death. That's right. Crucifixion, murder, and that this is something that they show it in a national television program. And what got me was that every country had a flag and somebody was holding the flag on the side of that whole um, that whole uh, entrance uh -huh. as the horseman and he was in a whole big thing with a cape and it was black inside you couldn't even see a face right. and then as he drove past the flags the flags came behind him mm. uh -huh. yeah. let me tell you uh -huh. something Spirit. the devil is working really really hard now. Yes. And he's right. bringing out power to help you to understand he is going to claim what he feels belongs to him. Yeah. Now he had every nation flag walking behind this pale horse that represents death. So I'm telling you this because I want you to understand. God gave me this scripture to read to you for you to understand. When you use Jesus' name, you're targeted. Yeah. You're targeted. Real. Mm -hmm. Don't think that you can just say, you know what, I'm not going to get in no argument with nobody. I'm not going to uh, uh, mention Jesus to nobody. I'm just going to keep it with me, my family, you know, and our. You're going to have to come out the closet with this. Because if you don't come out the closet, you're going to be attacked. And it's getting to the point now, you got to judge, is same-sex marriage good? Should man and man marry? Should woman and woman marry? You, you, all this is coming in our face as Christians. That's right. You got to have an answer. And you got to stand for who? God. Let me tell you this. This here scripture opens up that portal to let you know 
that is coming. Yeah. And it's coming, not only is it coming, it's here. That's right. There it's here. Amen to that. So then, um, okay, he's a, um, um, it says Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that was, meant that this man stands before you healed. So they couldn't get mad and they couldn't attack Peter and John because the man healed was standing next to him. So how can you deny somebody was healed standing next to you and you telling them that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the one who did it? So this is what Jesus is. And this is what Peter said. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. What he let them know is you killed him. He raised from the dead. He's back. And he is the cornerstone of the church. He's a cornerstone of the movement. No matter how you try to isolate him, move him out, tell people, don't say nothing in his name. He is the cornerstone. Yeah. So you can't get away from that. Then yeah. here they go. Yeah. I, I, could, I could do this whole chapter, I'm telling you. Because it's so filled with revelation that we need yeah. today. Yeah. And it says here, um, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Yeah. But I tell you this, if you watch if you watch TV, you'll hear them saying that's not true. <laughs> and you have some famous people saying it too. Mm -hmm. Who got who got some, you know, clarity that people follow them. And you got them saying that, oh no, you can be saved in other ways besides Jesus Christ. This Bible do not lie. No. Do not lie. Amen. And do not lie. His word will never return void. That's right. That means anytime something is said in this book, you cannot dispute it or you cannot turn it into a lie and think it's going to work. It is not going to work. Thank you. And then he says here, when they saw, now this is what got me, the priests and, you know, Sadducees and all them. When they saw um, the, the courage of Peter and John, they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. Unschooled. I remember I heard that, you know, somebody read that to me. I heard a preaching on that. And I thought, well, they wasn't, they wasn't educated. They didn't know how to read and write. And when you think about it, and I want you to take a deep thought on this. When they say unschooled, uneducated, could they be unschooled, uneducated, and write the book of Peter 1, Peter 2? John, St. John, then John 1, 2, and 3? And then John wrote Revelations. Could they be uneducated and ordinary men? They was touched by the Holy Spirit. Amen. They was guided by God. Amen. They was given direction by God, which is what God wanted to do with us if we stop living sinful lives. And then it says here, then it says here, ordinary men. They were astonished and they took note that these men were had been with Jesus. Then they realized, oh wow, we might have killed Jesus. But we forgot about the men he, he, that was following him. And this is what we are supposed to be doing. This is the path we are supposed to be taking. We are supposed to be those disciples now. Amen. And how Peter was bold and said, who you crucified? <laughs> that was like a slap in their face. They didn't appreciate that. And I said, and, and, and it's interesting to see how they finally noticed, oh, 
these men that was with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred with each other. So you know they had to go in the back corner in the, in the dark in the corner and they had to start talking about how, how we going to handle this. Okay? And this is interesting. Because the, the Bible says in John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Nobody comes to salvation but by me. How is you going to stand there and say, you shouldn't say Jesus. And here they go here. What are we going to do with these men? They ask. Everyone living in Jerusalem know they have performed a notable sign. And we cannot deny it. Now they can't deny that the man was healed. They can't deny that these Two men, Peter and John, connected with Jesus, had did something miraculous. Right. And they cannot deny it. And then they said here, but to stop this thing from spreading any further amongst the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Hmm. I said, well, <laughs> well, if that ain't putting you in a corner and you a believer and you a Christian, what is? How can you say you a Christian and don't speak on Jesus? And, and, and I love Peter's answer. You know, Peter is just cool. He's cool. Then they call them in again and command them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Hmm. <laughs> this is what Peter said. But Peter and John replied, which is right by God's eyes to listen to you <laughs> or to him? God. <laughs> he said, well, which is right? What what, what y'all expect what y'all think I should do? And that was just a little bit of a a tease with them. They knew what to do, but they just telling them so they can understand that what you're saying is ridiculous. What you're saying is um is is not correct. And what you're saying is we cannot do. Hmm. There's no way I'm going to be a, a, a Christian and not talk about Jesus. And then he said, he said, you will, you, you be the judge. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. All praise him. So, believers today, Amen. I want you to understand if you look around in your spiritual eyes and you notice what's going on, you can see the devil at work. You can see him. And, 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 and you ain't got to look far. You can look in your family. You can look in your children. You can look, you can look even in the church. You can look and see where the devil is trying to infiltrate. But we as believers got to stand. Amen. And one thing I, 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 I wanted to add to that uh, to that um, to be mentioning the um, the story about the, the the mounting stuff that they was doing for the Olympics. When they did that the next day the power in Paris went out. The power in Paris 
went out. I'm not talking about just on a little corner. The whole city was white out dark. And then they got on the, on the media and said, some people say this was God. Some people say it was just too much electricity with the Olympics there and all this other stuff. But isn't it a coincidence it happened right after they mocked God? They mocked God, and then they thought that their, everything was going to be cool. God let them know, I got the power. Why is y'all playing with me? I got the power. And then on top of that, they did an open worship service to combat what was done with the, um, with the Olympics. And I mean, there was thousands of these people singing Jesus' name. Calling on him loud and giving him praise and worship, and I'm telling you, I got, I, I got my, my my chest got up. I'm like, woo, yes, and I start saying Jesus' his name because you can't run from it. You got to come at it face to face and let them know who you believe in, because it's gonna come a time. Just like they told, they start spreading rumors they was uneducated, common. It's going to come a time when you don't go along with their agenda and their program, you're going to be uneducated. And you're going to be common. Because it's not about their education, it's about what you know or what you believe in or what you're studying. If you go with the world, you cool in the game, you good. But once you step out and you understand that this life, this life, your life, belongs to God and no one else, mm -hmm. then you're going to be attacked. But, but it's cool. I'm going to be honest with you. I'd rather be attacked because then I know I'm in the right part. Bar part. Because nobody bothers me, I'm going to start wondering why they ain't bother me. Am I doing something that's going with the devil? Do I look like I want it is? You got to stand for Christ. Okay. I'm going to end with this because I could I can go on and I might because I'm telling you, this uplifted me to know when I'm down and out, when I'm having moments of, of just despair or just feeling a little depressed or feeling uneasy that God is with us. God will pick you up. He will help you. He will bring you through it. And I read this, and I'm going to end with this that I read. I thought it was so, so important. And if you want to take down the scriptures I'm getting ready to read, you can go ahead and do that too. And I read this. It says here, Jesus is the only way to heaven for several reasons. Jesus was chosen by God, is one, to be the Savior. You can find that in 1 Peter 2 and 4. Jesus is the only one to have come down from heaven and return there. Amen? Amen. And the scripture for that is John 3, 13. He is the only person to have lived a perfect human life. Hebrews 4, 15. He is the only sacrifice for sin. <clears throat> Remember, those those goats and all that, mm -hmm. that had been banned. God brought a real sacrifice, his son. And the scripture for that is 1 John 2 and 2. The next one is Hebrew 10 and 26. He alone filled the law and the prophecies. Matthew 5, 17. He is the only man to have conquered death forever. So understand, you ain't got to fear dying. All of us are going to die. 
all of us is going or is going in that, that pathway. Those are two things you can you can be assured of. But you do have an option of where you go after you die. And that option is in your hands while you're living. And the scripture for that is Hebrew 2, 14 and 15. He is the only mediator between God and man. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. He is the only man who God has exalted to be the high, highest to the to the highest place. That's where the right uh, right next to him, right? And that is Philippians 2 and 9. And as I close today, I want you to understand that things are getting serious now in this world. And if, if you heard so many people say, Jesus is coming, it's not a cliche. It's true. He's coming, but he wants us to be prepared. So as we get through, as we go through our day, Monday through Saturday, we do our thing, don't forget, you want to draw some people to come with you to, to heaven. You want them to be saved too. And it's time for us to start speaking his name. Say in Jesus' name. Yeah. And if people who get upset with that, then you know who they are. Yeah. You can tell the tree by the fruit it bears. So if it's not accepted when you say Jesus, it's, if it's rejecting it, then who are you talking to? So you got to understand this is important. So as we close the day, I want to end in prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift our hearts and our hands up to you. You are awesome. You are wonderful. We need you. No doubt about it, we need you. We can do nothing without you. Lord, help us to be the, the, the fighters, the ambassadors, the people that you need for your kingdom to be built, Lord. To keep people knowing that you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to you no one can come through our God but by you, Jesus. We thank you for your life that you gave and the redemption and the, and, the, and, the, and the things that you caused for us to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. And this we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. 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 I love to praise, praise him. him. I, I 